Hello and welcome back. This is going to be another lore reading. Just, you know, take a little bit of time. And we can to remember what we've learned. You know, nothing major going on. Not like there's a demon possessed this young noble who might, you know, wreak havoc that we're trying to make sure we get under control. You know, that's just. Relax, remember what we learned. Alright, what do we got here? Bavari dominance. Bavari Harn hounds are descended from pack leaders, pack hunters. Like their ancestors, they are highly influenced by a defined order of dominance. The primary method of determining that order is by claiming territory and scent marking major landmarks. Once established, the dominant Mavari gains a substantial increase in confidence and stature within his territory, a trait that indirectly benefits master as well as hound. Um, yeah, my understanding is that well, wolves are pack hunters in general. Um, and they kind of, if I'm recalling correctly, they kind of half domesticated themselves because they started working with humans to hunt and they were more successful, like both humans and the wolves were a lot more successful when they worked together and so they started coming to human settlements and also are trash. Don't see why it would be different in this world. Okay, what are the characters? Connor Guerin. I feel like I'm sleeping, but I guess I'm not. By most of the bands and arles of Ferelden cart their children with them to the landsmeet in the interest of eventually marrying them off, Connor has spent his entire life in Redgrave. And it's hardly surprising. A child possesses, possesses the gift of magic. Well, technically still does. By the law, he should have been taken to the Circle of Magi at the first sign, abdicating his claim to Redcliffe. Instead, the boy was kept out of public view and his magic hushed up, with disastrous results. All mages are beacons that attract the attention of fade spirits. Because of this, they are trained and tested by the Circle to ensure that they can withstand the attacks of malevolent fade creatures that seek entry into the waking world. Untrained Connor drew the attention of a powerful demon that tore the veil asunder. I wonder if there's ever a case in which, which, thanks to political machinations, someone gets declared a mage and sent off to the Circle of Magi without actually being a mage. Liliana. Liliana than had ever been apparent in Lothering, however, she spent much of her life as a bard in Orlais, a minstrel, an assassin, and spy. Did she actually say that? Employed by the nobles of Valreo in their elaborate games of intrigue, Liliana takes care to honor the Lothering cloister that took her in and keeps symbols of Andraste's blessing close to her heart. Let's see that. With the loyalists' grasp on the mage's political community, many libertarians and equitarians, not sure what that one is, have begun to see eye to eye with respect to the chanter's role in a mage's daily life. A glowing num growing number of mages, I suppose they might be glowing too, particularly those whose magic never strays from the maker's mandate, feel that the chantry's constant oversight is a burden upon their creativity and their very will and one that hinders their ability to do their work. These mages, along with a number of hedge wizards who work their arts outside at the Chantry's influence, have formed a shadow guild of sorts, a mages collective, wherein members can submit requests and have them seen to without judgment. This collective manages to work in relative secrecy. They have members discreet and their clients anonymous. As of yet, this collective has seen no sanction from the Templars there has been no sign that its members are practicing magic, which the maker would not approve. Still practicing magic outside the influence of the Chantry 
is a dream for some and a dangerous notion for others, and many believe that it is only a matter of time before the veil of secrecy is lifted and the Mages Collective is brought to swift and brutal justice. From a treatise on magic and politics by first Enchanter Josephus. That's interesting. I wonder. I don't remember Mages Collective being a thing in either of the subsequent two games. Admittedly, Inquisition, the Circle of Magi kind of broke off and there was a big war. So I can see how they would have disappeared during that, but. Anyway, so that appears to be it for this session. Um, hope you enjoyed, and have a good day.